Hey folks, this one is called the Uniform Commercial Code is for Slaves. You know, I keep getting people contacting me about accessing the Treasury account, becoming a secured party creditor, filing documents under the Uniform Commercial Code, and you know, that's all for slaves. Many people like to use terminologies that are found in the Uniform Commercial Code, like secured party or creditor or any other terminology in the Uniform Commercial Code, and you're you're uh, you're turning yourself. You're saying you're you're a slave. Okay. Now you have to understand that each issue is treated by itself. But the more evidence you put out there that you're one of the slaves, then you got to defeat all of that. And um, slaves don't have any rights. My uh, blog is uh, sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group, Sovereignty International, is being deleted. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. And my Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. And my BitChute, that's my BitChute profile, but I don't have all my videos up there. Um, this is Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Uh, commercial law, the substantive law dealing with the sale and distribution of goods, the financing of credit transaction on the security of the goods sold, and negotiable instruments. All of those words, credit transactions, uh, security, negotiable instruments, financing, that's all uh, words in the Uniform Commercial Code. And then it goes on, it says, most American commercial laws governed by the Uniform Commercial Code. That doesn't mean all of it. That means most of it. So there is things that you can do that are not commercial and um, that don't fall under the commercial code, under the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, and it's all actually related to Federal Reserve notes. Um, not all commercial laws governed by the Uniform Commercial Code. If military script, commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, etc., is used, then it's governed by the Uniform Commercial Code. That's that's really what you have to do to uh, keep yourself out of it. Is not use use gold or silver coin, or at least show on paper that's what you used, and and uh, you can separate yourself. Matter of fact, there's a friend of mine. That has a friend. I don't know this guy personally, but this friend of mine, he's a very good friend, so I believe him, has a friend that has a bunch of gaming machines in Texas. And they're, uh, they're, um, um, it's illegal to gamble in Texas. And so having these kinds of institutions is, is illegal, and they'll come in and shut you down. But there's a lot of them around. There's a lot of them around, uh, you know, usually like you'll find them in uh, local corner convenience stores and stuff like that. But this guy runs whole establishments with like 50 machines in it and stuff like that. The uh, the state allows, you know, uh, simple gaming, but they can't be doing payouts or they can't be caught doing payouts. Well, this guy has like, he's got whole establishments of, of you know, 50, 60 machines and, and uh and uh, but what they do is they don't use Federal Reserve notes. OK, they use actually silver coin and uh, and they actually do the payouts at another location. So so the bottom line is, is that um, the um, uh, because they're not using the Federal Reserve notes uh, and, and they're able to get away with this kind of stuff. OK, it's all tied to the Federal Reserve notes. And the reason is, is the Clearfield Doctrine. Clearfield Trust Company versus United States, 1943. Uh, governments, which means uh, any sovereign, descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, and securities checks is concerned. For purposes of such suit, such corporations are and individuals are regarded as in entities entirely separate from government. Under international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by non de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during the war in his own name. Why do they think? Why do you think they spell your name in all block capital letters? A mixed war is one made in one side by public authority and the other by a mere private person. So, therefore, it's not unreasonable to think that when the cop stops you on the side of the road, he's making war on you, and because he's armed, it's an armed conflict whether you recognize it that way or not, and falls under the Geneva Convention. Um, 
the Geneva Convention um, um, to regulate or to protect. Uh, uh, Oh, man, I can't remember the actual name, but it's in 1949, protect uh, the rights of uh, uh, um, protected persons of 1949. Anyways, um, so uh, anyways, uh, vid.me shut down on the 15th of December and YouTube channel called Southern Key International is terminated. Uh, YouTube was busy changing their rules, and so I said, screw them. I made the exclusive content available on my website, but you'll need a Google account to set it up right now. It's they're all YouTube videos on my uh, other channel, but um, um, they're private. So if you want to watch them, you got to get a Google account, and I have to grant you permissions. But um, but um, um, and at some point, if Google keeps giving me a hard time here, then I'll just um, um, you know I'll start making my videos available on my website. Um, I have two subscription levels. I accept cryptocurrencies. I have uh, the basic subscription level is $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year for the videos only. Uh, my uh, 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 platinum subscription level is $4.99 a month or $39.99 a year for videos plus unlimited consultations. Uh, but you have to understand the limit of my un con consultations because I am not a liar. Uh, no, I'm in an attorney. No, actually, I'm in a liar because... All, all attorneys go into court and they say, this guy did this and this guy did that, and they don't have any firsthand knowledge of anything. And so they're liars by definition. And so, but I can tell you what I would do under a certain circumstance and where to find the forms. The only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception. And my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit, but I cannot fight all the battles. Okay, and so I need other people being on point and bringing up the right issues uh, to uh, to uh, affect some change. The uh, so if you want to do a subscription just as a way of doing a donation, it's a modest donation. There's no doubt, but everything is appreciated, and a whole bunch of people chipping in a little bit adds up pretty fast. And uh, so, anyways, I'm currently publishing one video a week. Um, Actually, in the near term, I'll probably be doing a couple a week, but but um, there's limited topics that I can do, and I don't like repeating myself. So, um, um, you know, I'm pretty well done everything I want to do, uh, but there's a, occasionally there's new ones that come up like this one, okay? And so so um, it's going to be, you got to count on one a week. Right now I'm doing a couple a week because I happen to come up with a couple topics that I can use, but... Um, Count on one a week. Um, some of the exclusive advertise, uh, videos that are up there are Arlington Private Information Share. That's nine videos by itself. I have Land D training. I got Estoppel Certificates training, uh, Foreclosure Estoppel Certificates training, Corporate Denial training, Toll Roads Notice and Demand training, Invoice training, Notice of Void Judgment training. Some of the other exclusive content that's already been uploaded is uh, revocation of signature training, third-party witness training, federal habeas corpus training, revocation of voter registration training, and criminal complaint training. There'll probably be additional criminal complaint training. And I don't have any lawsuit training, but that's something that's in the works. And, uh, and other training, depending on what people are looking for. Now, a lot of times people ask me for, have you send me a training request? And it's already really up there. So um, if they come up with something that that um, that I can put up there that um, that I don't have already, then that's fine. But I just don't like repeating myself, and uh, and the stuff is already in my videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free in my two private groups at Yahoo Groups and Google Groups. So the training is really above and beyond. All exclusive content uh, will be on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. Anyways, so the Uniform Commercial Code is governed by the Unidroid Treaty. Uh, Unidroid stands for the Unification of Private Law, and the website says that 63 countries have adopted it. It's designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and the United States have been signatories for the Unidroid Treaty for over 30 years. The Unidroid website says nothing about Texas, Arizona, any of the American states, or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, the application is only in federal areas only. Unidroit covers negotiable instruments, civil liability, 
Gee, this sounds like stuff in court cases. <laughs> Legal status of women, contracts, transportation, franchising, civil procedure. It sounds like court cases. Secured transactions, maintenance obligations, banking law, leases, hotels, insurance. When they And then they make it mandatory. Anything related to marriage, divorce, children, municipal law, much more. Um, Canada and the United States have been signatories for 30 years, and uh, as of this date, 63 countries have signed on, um, and this is all stuff I already covered. This is the Unidroit website, and if you look there, um, get in close, uh, commercial contracts, cultural property, franchising, uh, and we'll get in close again. See that the header is Unidroit International Institute for the Unification of Private Law. Leasing, security interest, transport, banking law, capital markets, civil liability, civil procedure, contract, cultural property, franchising, hotel keepers, insurance, intellectual property, leasing, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, movement of persons, negotiable instruments. Why do you think they spell your name in all block capital letters when you get on an airplane? Because you are a passenger. That is a commercial word. Covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles, okay, but what's a motor vehicle? We'll talk about that in a minute. Anything related to marriage, divorce, and children. All categories covered in Unidroid are also categories which only commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, Bank of England notes can be used, etc. But they do not accept anything but commercial paper. And if you pay them with anything else, like if you gave them a silver eagle or a silver one-ounce silver coin, they would just convert it into commercial paper at the current rate. Okay, so they cannot accept anything but commercial paper. And uh, then it talks about the uh, 1955 Benelux Treaty on Compulsory Insurance Against Civil Liability in Respect of Motor Vehicles. And the 1959 Convention, uh, again, that's Civil Liability, 1958 Convention Concerning the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children. See, children actually comes under Unidroid. The term, uh, this is Title 18, United States Code, Section 31. The term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property or cargo. And it even goes into saying that the term used for commercial purposes means a carriage of persons or property for any fare fee, rate, charge, or other consideration, or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or undertaking intended for profit. Uh, so a motor vehicle is only carrying passengers or property for hire. Okay, so that's um, um, that's what a motor vehicle if you're just traveling to and from home then you don't have a motor vehicle now uh, so this is a membership list and this is not all of it it's like about five or six pages so this is only one and shows canada and australia china chile um united kingdom united states okay um there's a whole bunch of countries there's 63 countries anything in america canada united states is federal um uh, involving motor vehicles is federal all the courts or banks or finance, municipal corporations are federal and fall under Unidroid. Don't just forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. On Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. And there's my BitChute profile. There's the front page of my channel. The subscribe button's clicked. Uh, otherwise, it'll be red. The bell is not clicked. Otherwise, it would look like it's vibrating. And so if you want to be notified about uploads, you got to click that bell and uh, it pop up will come up. you got to check the box and click OK to be notified. This is Steam It. Left arrow is for when you do your upvotes. Middle arrow is how many upvotes. And the right arrow is where you make comments. This is Steam It. Uh, the hand is touching the crypto wallet and a little window comes down and you can follow or unfollow someone. There has been created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state. And this is a C. Howard uh, versus Sinking Fund of Louisville, a U.S. Supreme Court case, uh, 1953. And that's cited in Schwartz versus O'Hara Township School District, a Pennsylvania case. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independent of that instrument. And that's the dissenting opinion of Justice Marshall Harlan 
in the case Downs versus Bidwell, U.S. Supreme Court, again, 1901. So, again, and if one, if the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independent of the Constitution, well, then that means that it's unconstitutional, isn't it? Hmm? Think about it. And this is uh, Chisholm versus Georgia, 1794. So the point I want to make with this is in 1794, there was only one nation on the planet, and that was the United States of America. And so in 1871, when they set up this corporation, they went and created a, a fictitious entity uh, to make the United States similar to all the rest of the nations that were already here, corporations. Uh, a state does not owe its origin to the government of the United States in the highest or any of its branches. It was in existence before it. It derives its authority by the same pure and sacred source as itself, the voluntary and deliberate choice of the people. A state is altogether exempt from the jurisdiction of the courts of the United States or from any other exterior authority, unless in the special instances where the general government has power derived from the Constitution itself. The question to be determined here is whether this state, so respectable and whose claims soars so high, is amenable to the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of the United States. This question, important in itself, will depend on others, more important still, and may perhaps be ultimately resolved into one no less radical than this. Do the people of the United States form a nation? By that law, the several states and governments spread over our planet are considered as forming a society, not a nation. So that's my point, is in 1794, there was only one nation on the planet, and that was the United States of America. So in, when they created this criminal corporation in the District of Columbia, they were making an entity just like all the rest. This is the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. As used in this act, the term United States means the government of the United States. That's that unconstitutional corporation. The term currency in the United States means currency, which is legal tender in the United States, includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. So Federal Reserve notes are only meant to be used inside that unconstitutional corporation. When you use them, you volunteer into that unconstitutional corporation. The forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. They formed a part of the public debt of the United States, the validity of which is solemnly established by the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. So, again, legal tender notes were actually, they were talking about the U.S. Treasury notes that were in circulation at that point, but, um, but uh, it's legal tender notes. And Federal Reserve notes are legal tender too. So they're all forced loans. And their IOUs, and it was they formed a part of the public debt of the United States, the validity of which is solemnly established by the Fourteenth Amendment. Okay, so they were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. So that that corporation is trying to take over everything, and um, that's what they're saying here. And it's all established by the Fourteenth Amendment. Now, the Fourteenth Amendment doesn't affect me and you unless you volunteer in, okay? You gotta be careful not to volunteer in. And that's why you can, you have to stay out of commerce. Once you volunteer in to that criminal corporation, you have no rights. You're a piece of property. You, they can do anything they want, and they do. Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, Bank of England notes, etc., cetera, are commercial paper, which is a private money system. There is a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of a discharge. See, these liars lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. Anyways, the point being is, is that when you use Federal Reserve notes, you're not paying it, okay? At common law, only gold or silver are legal tender, okay? That is a uh, 1820 court case, but they're citing Book Two of the Institutes and the Laws of England, which goes back to the 1500s. So this is as old as time itself. So gold or silver are really, if you think about it, they're for barter. When, when they say legal tender, they're saying that it's something the government considers money. So why would the government consider money? It's how you pay bills with the government. When you're dealing with the government, that's how you deal with it. But it doesn't mean that you have to use it everywhere. It's up to you what you want to use. That's why I like cryptocurrencies. 
and and really cryptocurrencies facilitate barter the thing i like the best about cryptocurrencies is they're not a debt to anyone okay they're not a forced loan they're not they're not a debt to anybody and so um so they're much more lawful money than um federal reserve notes are by far cryptocurrencies are not a private money system nobody really owns them okay if you have if you own um, a bitcoin well you own that bitcoin but you don't own the power to regulate it nobody owns it okay there's a there's an organization that basically manages the whole thing but they once with bitcoin bitcoin is often running by itself that organization that manages everything could just go the way of the dinosaur and it wouldn't make a hill of beans worth of difference at this point and so so um that's the thing is once the thing is going it takes on a life of its own cryptocurrencies are not commercial paper okay that's why the government has so much trouble regulating them they can't it's barter you know it's it's the free it's free enterprise so the government can't regulate them that's why they're having trouble they can re regulate icos which is an initial coin offering and the objective there is just to make sure that they're not involved in fraud and and i i, I think that's a good idea but uh, but once the thing is off and running, I mean, uh, there's nothing that anybody can do. So what is commerce? Commerce has many names. A common law contract is not commercial. So I can do something between we, me and especially if I don't use Federal Reserve notes. Okay, then it's a common law contract. And commerce deals only with fictitious entities. Okay, it's always with fictitious entities. We're going to go into that. You can make a common law contract without being in commerce. Commerce is known by many names. Martial law, civil law, law merchant, private international law, Roman law, municipal law, canon law. And we're going to go into some court cases right now that talk about all that. The root of all of this law is Roman law, and it comes from the Roman cult. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 3, do it yourself how not to volunteer for the selective service in the draft. Martial law is here. Do it yourself no income tax. Do it yourself free mail. Do it yourself kangaroo courts 1 through 15. Canada border pigs playlist. So here's some court cases that are going to help you understand what commerce is. There must be uniformity in maritime law. The principles of maritime law are applicable to commercial law. Therefore, there must be uniformity in commercial law. So maritime law, commercial law, they're basically interchangeable. There is no more reason why the Admiralty should have cognizance of bottom rate instruments as maritime contracts than of policies of insurance. Both are executed on the land, and both intrinsically respect maritime risks, injuries, and losses. And that's, that's insurance is under maritime Admiralty law. That's what it's saying. So when you buy insurance for your car, that's a maritime liability that you're protecting. The 14th Amendment is an extension of the national military powers presently used in a municipal character and enforced by municipal laws, stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article I tribunals. So, again, when you use Federal Reserve notes, then you're volunteering. That's why they want Federal Reserve notes to pay filing fees, because they want to give you that military tribunal. They don't want to do justice. They want it to be a kangaroo court. Okay, this is taken from a book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. The delegation of cognizance of all civil cases of Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction. Get a load of that. Civil cases, all civil cases of Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction. To the courts of the United States comprehends all maritime contracts, torts, and injuries. The latter branch is necessarily bounded by the locality. Okay, that means maritime is bounded by the locality, but it can be on the land. So can Admiralty. Matter of fact, they just said before that the insurance was a maritime uh, issue. <laughs> the former extends over all contracts, which is Admiralty. Okay, so again, a contract is Admiralty by definition. Wherever they may be made or execute, whatsoever may be the form of the stipulations which relate to the navigation or business or commerce of the sea. So it's all commerce. It's when you use Federal Reserve notes, you're inviting yourself into the Admiralty and maritime jurisdictions, and uh, you're, it's all a contract, and you've agreed to it by your using it. 
And the forms and modes and proceedings and causes of equity and admiralty and maritime jurisdiction shall be according to the civil law. Remember, we talked about that early, earlier. Equity, admiralty, and maritime are all civil law. Why do you think they call it rules of civil procedure? <laughs> In the meantime, the civil law was a form of law imposed on the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. And that's taken again from that non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Elliott and the Utah Supreme Court in the case Dyett versus Turner. Black's Law Dictionary, 18th, uh, 8th edition. The Roman law is the body of rules that govern the social relations of many peoples in Europe, Asia, and Africa for some period between the earliest prehistoric times and 1453 A.D. Yet the essential fact is that no present-day community consciously applies as binding upon its citizens the rules of Roman law in their unmodified form. That law is an historical fact. It would have only a tepid historical interest if it were not for the circumstance that before it became a purely historical fact, it was worked into the foundation and framework of what is called the civil law. <laughs> And that's Max Radin Handbook on Roman Law, 1927. And that's cited in Black's Law Dictionary. Roman law is voluntary. You got to volunteer in. The key is not to volunteer in. Under the UCC, all debt is Roman law, includes bonds, promissory notes, mortgages, stock certificates, negotiable instruments, bank notes, securities, etc. It's all Roman law. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administrating Your Public Servants for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer a gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the uh, fake money, the uh, military script, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. A banknote is a contract. A banknote resembles a common promissory note issued by a bank or a corporation authorized to act as a bank. It is, in fact, a promissory note, and actually, uh, maybe it was, but it's not anymore. But such notes are not, for many purposes, to be considered as mere securities for money, but are treated as money in the ordinary course and transaction business by the general consent of mankind. It's all voluntary. Script. Certificates of ownership, either absolute or conditional, of shares in a public company, corporate profits, etc. The term has also been applied to United States, in the United States, to warrants or other like orders drawn on a municipal treasury and to the fractional paper currency issued by the United States during the period of the Civil War. Well, that's U.S. Treasury notes. So then Federal Reserve notes are script as well. Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. A person is a legal entity. This is Uniform Commercial Code 1-201, B27. Person means an individual, corporation, business, trust, estate, trust, partnership, limited liability company, association, joint venture, government, governmental subdivision, agency, or instrumentality, public corporation, or any other legal or commercial entity. Well, they're saying right here that a person is only a legal or a commercial entity. That's why the bail priest in those kangaroo courts asks you, are you the name? And what you have to do is tell them that you don't intend to be the surety or fictitious entity for their fraudulently created Sestake Trust. A consumer means an individual. Okay, so that's a fictitious entity. A defendant means a person. A party is distinguished from a third party means a person. A purchaser means a person. A buyer in ordinary course of business means a person. <laughs> it's all fictitious entities. Representative means a person empowered to act for another, including an agent, officer, corporation, trustee, executor, administrator of an estate. A bank means a person engaged in business of banking. Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports the finding of its non-existence. So they just presume you're one of the slaves. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. See, the so-called 14th Amendment is unconstitutional video. U.S. citizens are enemies of the state. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the public charitable trust 
the constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and the U.S. Inc. And that's five pages. That's a summary of five pages of the congressional record um, uh, dated June 13, 1967. And a summary of Henry Boland's is every taxpayer is assessed to K trust having sufficient interest in preventing abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligations to pay income tax. Unless the defendant can establish that he is not a citizen of the United States, the IRS possesses authority to attempt to determine his federal tax liability. See, if you're one of the slaves, then you get to pay the tax. Uh, this is uh, the D.C. Code, uh, which is, um, let's see, Chapter 56, Section 1617 and 31, Stat 1432. The legal estate to be the Sestake use. Okay, so there, this is exactly what's going on. It's all a Sestake trust. This is more D.C. Code, which was approved March 3rd, 1901. At 31 Stat 1189, right up at the front, be it further enacted that an interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely, third, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. More DC code, section 117 at 31 Stat 1208, uh, that in addition to the jurisdiction conferred in the preceding section, plenary jurisdiction is hereby given to said court holding the said special term, to hear and determine all questions. Plenary is military dictatorship, folks. Uh, more DC code, absence of seven years, section 252 at 31 stat 1230, presumption of death. So they just go ahead and presume that you're one of the slaves. That's exactly what they do. And this is found in Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mort Main. And um, what I did was I got a bunch of Google uh, Law Dictionaries, uh, but they weren't searchable. So I had Google Pro, so I made them searchable. I, I did an OCR on them, Optical Character Recognition, made them searchable, and then I started searching them by keywords, and I found all sorts of neat things. Anyways, quote, Yet still I was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiapes, to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, and receiving the actual profits, while the season of the land remained in the nominal fiapi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy. That's the Roman cult, folks. So that's quite scam, eh? Think about that. They get to assault you with their Sestake Trust, and then they get to decide whether you've been assaulted with the Sestake Trust or not. <laughs> That's quite the scam. Who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, to be bound in conscience to account to a Sestake use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. Well, that's taxes, folks. And do you think that bail priest is going to decide anything else? And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. This is the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966, located at Public Law 89719 and 80 Stat 1130 and 1131. Definitions. Motor vehicle. The term motor vehicle means a self propelled vehicle which is registered for highway use under the laws of any state or foreign country. So, under the Uniform Commercial Code, they changed the definition of motor vehicle. Under Title 18, United States Code, remember we read it, it's any contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power. This gives them the right to presume that you're one of the slaves. It's all it has to be as registered. Security. The term security means any bond, debenture, note, certificate, or other evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation or other government or political subdivision. This is Uniform Commercial Code written all over it. Read this thing. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's got Uniform Commercial Code written all over it. Unless displaced by the uh, particular provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code, the principles of law and equity, including the law merchant and the law relative to capacity, the contract, Principle and agent, estoppel, fraud, misrepresentation, duress, coercion, mistake, bankruptcy, and other validating or invalidating cause supplement its provisions. So they always give themselves an out if they feel like taking it. 
The body of learning that we call conflict of laws elsewhere is called private international law because it is applied to adjustment of private interests while public international law is applicable to relations between states. In the sense of public international law, the several states of the Union are neither foreign to the United States nor are they foreign to each other, but such is not the case in the field of private international law. The Uniform Commercial Code, by the copyright owner's own permission, is private international law. That's Unidroit. Okay, they'll tell you that right on the Unidroit website. A private law is one which is confined to particular associations, individuals, or corporations. A private law can be enforced by a court of competent jurisdiction when statutes for its enforcement are enacted. That's why they pass uniform commercial code statutes in every state. Statutes creating corporations are private acts. So, so they set up a private uh, a corporation called uh, City of Fort Worth. Where's the contract where I agreed to be subject to you, to them? or to any other city. In this connection, the Federal Reserve Act is private law. Federal Reserve banks derive their existence and corporate power from the Federal Reserve Act. The distinction between public and private acts is not always sharply defined when published statutes are printed in their finally final form. It is all private law and international law, but may be referred to as private international law, and it is owned by the same people that own public law. The UCC was written and owned by Unidroid. It is the Roman cult. Actually, it's about 100 yards from the Holy See. To properly address public law, one must understand that it is private corporate charter that owns PL, public law, and it is all statutory. Public law is converted to public policy in 1938. Policy equals political equals police. All private corporations, including governments, are under public policy and are to deal only with other corporations as exemplified herein. Private man is not affected by public law, public policy, private law, or anything else. As long as private man does not harm another private man, he's not statutory but lawful. Public means of concerning or affecting the common unity of the people, the assemblage of private man, Private means not available for public use, control, or participation belonging to a particular person or persons, as opposed to the public or the government. Remember, as a corporation, the government becomes no more than any other corporation um, or person not holding an official or public position. The entire taxing and monetary systems are here, hereby placed under the Uniform Commercial Code, and that was, well, you could read that in the Federal Tax Lien Act in 1966 that we was just reading a few minutes ago. The U.S. pays 260000 per year to Unidroit for the use of the copyright Uniform Commercial Code. The International Registry is the private law of Unidroit. If the common law can try the cause and give full redress, that alone takes away the admiralty jurisdiction. And that was all before the 14th Amendment and the Civil War. In Krebel's Kate reports, quoted by Brown, is expressly said that without a stipulation, admiralty has no jurisdiction at all over the person. And that's true. Got to have a contract. The common law is the standard by which to ascertain uh, what are proper cases for a prohibition of, to a court of admiralty and not civil law. Well, um, a prohibition is a writ of prohibition, and they're talking whether they take it to a court of admiralty uh, whether uh, versus a civil law case. Capitus diminutio, meaning the diminishing of status through the use of capitalization in Roman law. Why do you think they spell your name in all block capital letters? The diminishing or abridgment of personality or loss or curtailment of a man's status or aggregate of legal attributes and qualifications. That all block capital letters entity is a slave. Words used in commerce, residence. Why do you think they want to know your residence? You don't have a residence if you're going to be in common law. Yeah, you have an abode. Sovereigns inhabit, they have an abode. Traffic is commercial. Commissioner is commercial. A motor vehicle is commercial. At common law, it's a private conveyance. Drive is commercial. You travel. People travel. They don't drive. Human is a living soul. A man, not a human. Liberty. People have freedom, not liberty. Liberty is something you get from a ship. Mail. Uh, people use the post as in a postal address. Transportation. Passenger, 
again, we'll talk about the airline tickets, okay? You're a passenger. That's commercial. Um, uh, at common law, you're a guest. A debtor or a creditor. Revenue. Income. At common law, you get compensation for labor, not income. Employee. Again, at common law, you get a compensation for labor. Spouse, you have a wife. Children, you don't have children. You have sons and daughters. Matter of fact, Carl Lentz, when he won his, got his son back after 11 years of being in the custody of CPS when they stole him, he got his son back. And um, he said they wanted to know, he said, you stole my property. And they wanted to know what's your property. And he held up a picture. <laughs> Married. You're not married, you're joined in holy matrimony. Assets, you don't have assets, you have property. Taxpayer, you're not a taxpayer, you're a non-taxpayer. Transportation is punishment in English law. This punishment is inflicted by virtue of sundry statutes. It's unknown to the common law. It is part of the judgment or sentence of the court that the party should be transported or sent into exile. Traffic, commerce, trade, sale, exchange of merchandise, bills, money, and the like. It's all commercial. Liability, the quality or state of being legally obligated or accountable. Legal responsibility to another, to society, enforceable by civil remedy or criminal punishment. Black's Law, 8th edition. In 1666, King Charles II signed the Sesta KV Trust Act. Thus, for the first time, we have a testamentary trust, a trust for the deceased into which the estate of the deceased is conveyed. On the same day this act was signed into law, the town of London burned. Burning records, maybe. Well, I think it was. It is under this type of trust that you, if you're a person, are now classified. If you're a fictional entity, as you legally died at the age of seven and your core property was put into an estate and the government is the trustee. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself or properly called municipal law to distinguish it from the law of nature and, and international law. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. So it's all interchangeable. This has been going on from the beginning of time. Deuteronomy 23, 19 to 20. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou mayest not lend upon usury. Why do you think they want a social security number? That's because they want to verify that you're an enemy of the state. Okay, an enemy of the state, they can they can loan money on usury. But, but one of we the people, they can't. And so... We, the people, need to get away from these bankster thieves. It's all about the banksters. That's the banksters. It's all about the banksters. We need to get away from this, from Federal Reserve notes. We gotta quit using them. And 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 in my in my thing, if you remember when I said that I accept donations, I always say that uh, I uh, I prefer gold or silver coin. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the fake money, the, the uh, et cetera, et cetera, the PayPal gifts. And so it's it's a less desirable alternative. I'm only accepting it because all these brain-dead idiots out here, that's all they know how to use. So anyways, um, that's the end of it. If you're in commerce, you're a slave. and um, But of course, it's all tied to the Federal Reserve notes and the commercial paper, the bankster thieves. It's all tied to them. If you can, you can do the same things and not use the commercial paper and um, nine times out of 10, they'll leave you alone. If you, if they don't leave you alone, then you need to educate them. But, but nine times out of 10, they'll just leave you alone. And all our statutes talk about cash. And so um, again, um, nine times out of 10, they'll leave you alone. And if they don't, then you, you need to educate them. Because, because they have no jurisdiction. If you don't use Federal Reserve notes, they got nothing to say to you. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.